Good evening, and welcome to this concert presented by the West Valley Wind Ensemble. If you have not heard this group before, you are in for a treat. Please welcome director Clark Chaffee to open the concert with a festive flourish.
by Richard L. Saucedo, an award-winning composer and arranger from Indiana. Now, I don't need to tell you what a barn dance is, but being from the Midwest, as I'm guessing some of you are, yes? I am reminded of a radio program I used to hear. National Barn Dance, remember that? Yeah. Broadcast in Chicago starting in 1924 was one of the first American country music radio programs and a direct precursor of the Grand Ole Opry. The program aired from the Center Theater in Chicago with a live audience, and it was carried by WLS, a clear channel signal that could be received throughout the Midwest and beyond on Saturday nights. The barn dance regularly featured performers like Gene Autry, Homer and Jethro, Red Foley, and the Williams Brothers, which included Andy. The show eventually moved to WGN until it left the air in 1968. So, let's go to a barn dance with our conductor, Evan Casey. Wait a minute, Evan. Hey, improv. Anybody know what WLS stands for? World's largest score. World's largest score. Sears.
Lerner and Frederick Lowe were the creative musical team whose works span three decades and include nine brilliant musicals. Lerner and Lowe are credited with writing some of the most stylish, sophisticated theater music of the 20th century. Their songs combine lush melodic music with witty, literate lyrics. You'll recognize these tunes from My Fair Lady, Gigi, and Camelot. Thank you. 
Midwinter, here arranged by Michael W. Smith, is the second movement of the Winter Suite by Gustav Holst. It was composed in 1908. You may know Holst for a later suite of his called The Planets. In the Bleak Midwinter was originally a Christmas carol based on a poem by Christina Rossetti, and it delivers a message of peace and hope as we approach the holiday season.
1800 on three American folk songs of the time. The Promised Land, Cindy, and I'm Sad and I'm Lonely. A little about the composer. Grundman was a graduate of Ohio State University. Oh, I guess I need to say the Ohio State <laughs> University. He composed for film, TV, and radio, but is best known for his symphonic band arrangements. He also co-authored the New York Times 1974 Crossword Puzzle Dictionary, and his name is still on the third edition. Evan Dixon is back on the podium for Kentucky 1800. Thank you. 
stay in the 1800s for another piece. American Pioneer Suite features four folk songs, simple yet beautiful melodies that bring to mind the everyday lives of the pioneers of the 1800s. Sailing at High Tide is a plaintive sailor's song. Cotton Eyed Joe is a fiddler's comic dance tune. I Wonder When I Shall Be Married depicts a young woman's fear of becoming a spinster, and Shantyman's song is a work song of the Erie Canal. By the way, a spinster was a woman in the Middle Ages who had a low-status job, one who was stuck with spinning or carding as opposed to doing the actual weaving. So women are called spinsters or old maids, while men get to be called bachelors, but ladies, we know who's always been in charge. <laughs> I dare not come. Ellie's my wife.
obviously not a concert of Christmas music, but it is December, so it is the season for a bit of the holiday spirit. The Window Ensemble is fortunate to include a wonderful group of players who call themselves the Cactus Clarinets. They are available for tea parties and that kind of thing. <laughs> to lead us in a Christmas sing-along. Now, does the audience have words or anything here? They don't need them? No, they don't.
This is Singing Christmas Carols by Jack Polutsky. On Christmas Eve, we bundle up and go out caroling. Our neighbors shut their windows when they hear my family sing. My voice is very beautiful. I sing just like a bird. But everybody drowns me out, so I am barely heard. Dad sings like a buffalo and mother like a moose. My sister sounds like breaking glass. My brother like a goose. Some people come and greet us. They bring cookies on a tray. I think they give us cookies just to make us go away. Though our singing sounds so sour, it sends shivers down my spine. When we're caroling together, there's no family sweet as mine. American Salute is based on the tune When Johnny Comes Marching Home. Gould, a renowned composer, conductor, arranger, and pianist, was born in 1913. His music was commissioned by symphony orchestras all over the United States, and he led many of those orchestras during his career as well. His works incorporate various styles and span all genres. His accolades include the Kennedy Center Honors Award, a Pulitzer Prize, and a posthumous Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, why would you give a Lifetime Achievement Award to someone after they have died? <laughs> really? Anyway, American Salute was written by Morton Gould in 1942.
by the Symphonic Wind Ensemble at Hellgate High School in Missoula, Montana. Now, with a name like Hellgate, you might think that the students got to name their own school, but actually the original name of Missoula, Montana, was Hellgate, named for nearby Hellgate Canyon, where Blackfeet warriors would ambush their enemies. Here is Cattle Drive from Montana Vision.
This one was composed in 1889 and dedicated to Columbia Commandery No. 2 of the Knights Templar of Washington, D.C. But all you really need to know is that this was the favorite march of Mrs. John Philip Sousa. <laughs> Thank you for joining the West Valley Wind Ensemble this evening, and here is the Thunderer March. <laughs> 